Uh, I just thought I'd um, walk you through very quickly um, these um, three different images that I've picked for you to show um, show my post processing on some of my ICM images. Um, I just want to start with a very simple one first. I've duplicated these in um, Lightroom so I can show you the original. So they're exactly the same, these two pairs. So I'm going to one of them. So this is a, an image I took um, last couple of winters ago because we didn't have any snow this winter and it's during the winter before. And I took this Im original image because I love the strength of the trees in the foreground versus that tiny little spindly tree on the left. Um, and when I was out in the snow, I loved the contrast between the snow and the strong branches. <coughs> so when I went out this time, I actually knew that I was going to shoot in black and white. So I didn't actually, or I was going to edit it in black and white. So what I would do, first of all, go into the develop module here in Lightroom. Those of you who aren't used to Lightroom, I try and explain what I'm doing so you can use it in whatever post-processing um, system you use. So what I do first is I play a little bit. I'm quite happy with the exposure. I'm just going to play with the contrast and just see whether it does anything. And I quite like it's just brought the trees a little bit forward. And now I'm just going to play with the blacks because, again, it just makes them a little bit more solid. So I'm doing this with the colour image before I flip it into black and white. Now, there's many ways you can do. Otherwise, I'm quite happy. I, I quite want all this white to be. I mean, I could go and get rid of the highlights. And then I bring back all this detail in the whites, but that's not actually, in this situation, that's not what I want because I want a very simple photo. So if I just double click, it returns it back to where it was originally. So I'm going to now go into black and white. There's many different ways you can do this. You could just click on black and white and then you can play with all the sliders. I'm a little bit of a cheat here because I'm going to go over to one of the standard black and white. I'm going to go and just have a look for what I normally do is go and have a look and see what the, um, the offered um, processing works from Lightroom to start with and I've got these black and white. This one I find is a bit washy. This one however I really like and I think this is the one I probably picked in the end. I'm just going to run through the other ones but I quite like this. It, this has almost a charcoal look I and mean, in amongst the trees that's quite nice. This one it's just too scratchy, there's too much detail. This one just a bit blur, not enough definition. Again doesn't quite do it for me. Too soft, infrared, selenium, sepia, Sepia, uh, yeah, none of those work. So I'm going to go back to the high contrast and click on that. Um, and actually, I'd be quite happy to leave that as it is. And it's just to show you that some images you can just flip into black and white very easily, or you can just take the easy option to just choose um, uh, an edit that somebody's already made or put in the system software. It's not to say you've got to go back to scratch. You could now start playing with the blacks. Um, what I do is up here, put these two um, on, and you can see I haven't got any strong blacks or whites. If I push it too far, not have it switched on. There we go. That's far too black now because these are just solid blacks. So I'm going to bring it back. I still find a little bit dark. I quite like the detail in the trunk, so I'm not going to push it very far. In fact, I'm going to take it back there and move it back just a little bit. Um, and really for this image that's all there is to it. So you can see these two here. I put them in a compare side by side. And you can see the before and the after. So you can see that. So I hope that was useful. If you're going to do black and white there are easy ways to do it. Okay so next we're going to just go and have a look at this water image that I picked out. And it's not one I've actually played with before, so I had a very quick play just to see whether there was anything coming out. But to many people, I'll say, don't chuck away your images unless you um, have got them home and onto your computer. And this is a prime example that I probably wouldn't have bothered. I've got enough other images from this session that I wouldn't have even touched this one. But for the purposes of this, I was looking for a new image. So um, it's very dark. There's not a lot going on. So we're going to develop. And sometimes what's intriguing to do is just press the auto and see what it does to start with. Look at all that detail that's hidden in there that you couldn't see at all. I mean, it's just, uh, if we reset that back again, it's black. So I'm just going to go and do it manually. So I'm just going to increase the exposure a little bit. And it's just bringing enough. I didn't want to take it as far as the auto had taken it. I just want the hints of colour to come through. I don't want them to dominate the image. Um, I'm just going to knock the highlights back because you can see the red reds are poking through to suggest that they're, they're too white. 
don't need to play with the blacks because obviously it's quite black already. Shadows, you can just pull these out a little bit and it will just pull the detail out without making it too bright in the bottom. Now I'm just going to play with the vibrance a little bit. Just to see. Quite often that you know it's quite often quite funny to pull it too far one way and push it back. So you can see the blues have come through. You can see where the blues are in the image now. But like that's not what I want. But I don't want to I want a little bit of colour there. And that's great. I don't generally touch the saturation, maybe one, two, but I don't tend to do too much. What you can do is you can go down and play with the individual hues within here. So if you, um, for example, you like this and you think it's quite green, or oh, that's a little bit brown now, that's a bit too green. It's actually quite good where it was set, but it's always quite intriguing to see sometimes where what what you can pull out and what you can't pull out. Here, you play with the temperature if you wanted it to go blue or a softer sort of palette and equally a little bit of pink you catch the warmth and the pink you end up with a, a very different image but overall in this situation I'm actually quite happy to have taken it from these two taken it from the top one to the bottom one and all I've done is just accentuated the, um, the detail that was hiding by just playing with the exposures um, and the shadows in this one. So it's just to show you can make some very quick adjustments and they can make a really big difference to your image. Um, lastly, I'm going to go into maybe a little bit more detail with this one. This is a, an autumn one and um, I'm going to just show you um, everything, I kind of the process I go through for this one. So you can see here, it's a little bit of white up here. Um, I'm finding that this top just slither at the top isn't actually adding anything to the image and I quite like working in 16 by 9 crops anyway for my woodland. So I'm going to go in 16 by 9 crop. I want to keep the keep the base of the tree. And you see the whites, the disturbing, the distracting, sorry, rather than disturbing, um, whites have disappeared and now we really concentrate on these two, this big tree on the left and you can see the little trees on the right which are balancing the image. Um, and the strength throughout the whole image and colour. And this was actually taken in the pouring rain, so just to prove that you can do ICM whatever the weather. Um, so I'm going to go through these step by step. Once I've done my crop, if I know I need a crop doing, I quite often do it first of all because then I can see what I'm really working on. Play with the exposure here. It's a little bit, I'm just going to pull it up a tiny little bit because I don't want to push it too far. Play with the contrast. Quite often it's just a, it's a guess, it's not... I sort of know what it's going to do. If you drop the contrast down, you have absolutely nothing. You push it up, you just start to pop the colours a little bit without making them saturated too much. Um, you just pull them out compared to the rest of the image. Highlights. In this situation, there are no blind highlights, so I'm not even going to touch the highlights because I don't want to dull any of the light areas in the image. Shadows. Again, I've not got any really dark areas. If you start pulling the shadows, you start softening the image, which is okay, like in the last water image, we wanted to find the detail. In this one, I don't want to lose the blacks at all. Now, whites, what they will do is they will make your white areas sing. And so you can see, if I pull it too far, yeah, and even that's too bright, so quite often I push it too, way too far and then pull it back, and then just go back up again. Just tiny increments. I can always... I quite often come back and play with these all again and I'm just finding it's not quite strong enough so I'm just going to drop the blacks and again dropping the blacks has the same effect as concentrating the colour as well. Again you can go too far and lose the detail so I'm just going to drop it there. Dehaze is an interesting one to play with. Again it can make it look, in this situation I don't think it works, actually when you take it the other way it creates quite an interesting image that you could go and play with a little bit further. You might quite like that effect. So I'm just going to leave that where it is. So um, I'm going to do a tiny little bit of vibrance here just to make the, the colours ping. And in this situation, I'm just finding this area just here and this area just here and a little bit on the corners are just a little bit too light. So I'm just going to use a vignette to darken down those areas there. Now, as I mentioned, this was a rainy day, so there was no sun coming through and no warmth. So now I'm just going to see if I can just make it feel like a little bit of a warmer autumn day, because there's actually quite a lot of orange, uh, green in this image still. So I'm just going to play a little bit with the warmth here. I don't want to take it too far, because you could make it really autumny, 
Um, and actually, it's a completely different image to uh, the original, but it's a little bit too far for me, but you've got no green coming through. I, if you then go too far and you can't remember where to take it back, just double click. And I'm just going to take it to about there. And overall, that I think is probably, I might work on individual parts of the image. Like here, I still find this little area a little bit bright. So um, I'd just maybe use a graduated filter to just knock off these edges here. So that you can, um, I'm all about losing any kind of distractive elements at all in this image. And apart from that, I'm not seeing a lot. So. Yeah, that was a quick run through of three different images, some very basic um, editing that I do on my ICM images, but I hope it uh, gives you an idea of what you can look for and what you can give it a go. Good luck and have fun.